Hi, and welcome back to this uh, final video in this uh, series of basic free CAD tutorials. And in this uh, last video, I'll make some screws to go in the corners of this box. So let's get started. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to make my project box part active. The reason I do that is when I create this new body, it's going to put it in the project box instead of dropping it into the bottom of the list here somewhere. So that's our body. Now we'll create a sketch. And in this case, I'm going to put it on the X, Z plane. Just like that. And then I'm going to draw a half profile of a countersunk screw. Just like that. Okay. So the this is an M3 screw, so the outside outer dimension of a, an M3 is three millimeters. But I want half that because this is a half profile, and you'll see why in a second. So that's 1.5 millimeters. So I'm going to make the, that chamfer there. Well, I don't know. 0.5. What do you think, Clive? 0.5. Yeah, 0.5. Why not? All right, there we go. So now we've got to set the length of this screw. Just pull that in there for a bit. All right. So make that length 10 millimeters. All righty. Now just something to quickly note, the length of a screw um, is not this length here. It's not the length of the thread necessarily. With countersunk screws, it's the distance between the surface that um, the screw sits flush with and the end of the screw. So that up there is where the surface will be because the screw sits, because it's countersunk, it sits slightly below the surface. If this were a normal um, cap head screw, then that would be the bottom surface of the head and the thread goes all the way up to that. But in this case, it's a countersunk, so it goes to the top of the head there like that. All right, so I need this distance here between these two points. So I've gone out to the internet and had a bit of a look. So we see that this is the dimensions of a normal countersunk screw. We see that the head depth there, K, is 1.86. That is 90 degrees there. And the diameter is somewhere between 5.54 and 6.72. So I'm going to make it 6 millimeters arbitrarily, I guess. So that depth is from there to there. Let's just pick those two. We'll make that 1.86. And we'll make that distance there 3, which is half of 6. And finally, that angle there, which I'll make 135 degrees. And there's our fully fully defined profile. Close that. Now I'll just hide these two for a moment so we can see what's going on. And I'll use the revolve tool here. Bit of highlight sketch. There we go. And I'll revolve that about the vertical sketch axis. If I chose the horizontal sketch axis, I get something that looks like that. Um, but in this case, we want a screw. So there we go. All right. So there, that's a basic screw. It doesn't look much like a screw just yet. It looks like a rivet. So I'm going to put a little cross in a Phillips head cross in there. So I'll come back to my XZ plane. And I'll put a sketch on that. This is one of the funny things about uh, FreeCAD is sometimes it does this. I actually want to be able to see that screw, so there we go. All right, actually one thing I will do is hide that origin. Yeah, that looks a bit better. Rightio, so now I need to put a profile for my slot in the top there. I'm going to reference that top surface. I'm also going to use this uh, 
section tool here to hide the unnecessary bits of the screw. And I'll put a profile in here just like this. No, not like that at all. <laughs> now why has that gone orange? The reason it's gone orange is because we've got a constraint here which puts that point on that line, a constraint here which puts that point on that line, and here we've got a constraint which says that's horizontal. Well that's well and fine but we don't need to have that so if I click on this to select the redundant constraints and then hit delete that'll just delete it. So let's just tidy this up a bit, make that horizontal there. Alright, so now I need to make a Phillips head slot. Let's make that, I can't remember what the, I think it's 60 degrees for a, a Phillips head. Is it 60? Don't know. Yeah, whatever. Alright, and I'm just going to make this look pretty, so 2 point, not 1.5, 2.5. No, that's too big. 2.2. Yeah, that'll do. Alrighty, and our depth can be two millimeters. Yeah, okay. Looks alright. Now then, I'm going to put a, make that into a pocket, and I'm going to make that about one millimeter wide. And now I'll just quickly highlight that plane again because something I want to show you is this. I'm going to make that symmetric to the plane. As you can see, it puts it equidistant about the plane, so it's half a millimetre either way. I want it to be in the centre like that, so that's what I'm going to do. Now, let's make the um, crosshead socket. So I'll highlight that pocket and I'll use the on the polar pattern feature tool and I'm going to tell it to have I'm going to sell it to use the vertical sketch axis there we go that's a little bit better because otherwise it'll bury that in there and I make that four to make it a normal cross I could make it three to make it a like a trilobe screwdriver thing but I'm gonna make it a normal Phillips yeah I think that looks right okay so there's my little screw. And we need to put that into place now. So bring those back. And I'll just transform that into position. Let's bring that up there like that. Put that one over here. Okay. Alrighty, there's one screw. Now, I need to do three more screws, one for each of the corners. There's a couple of ways I can do that. One is I could simply copy that screw along with all its uh, geometry and then paste it. It won't paste it into the project box, it'll paste it out here. I, I don't know why it does that, but that's just uh, the way FreeCAD works. Now the disadvantage with doing that, or maybe it's an advantage depending on your point of view, it depends what you're trying to do with it, because that screw there, and that screw there, actually I'll call them screws. Give them a name, there we go. So that screw there and that screw there are separate parts or separate bodies. With each with their own separate supporting geometry. What that means is if I change this one, that one will stay the same. So if I come in here, for example, and I don't know, do something uh, ridiculous like uh, make that five, like that. Oh, actually, I can't do that. Make it two. There you go. All right, so you can see that that screw has changed, but that one hasn't. It's a better way of doing this, 
Now, if you, if you actually wanted an M2 screw, that would be a good way to do it. That's not what, what I'm going to do. I'm going to come up here, I'm going to right click, and I'm come, coming down to Link Actions, and I'm going to make a link. Same thing, I'll put that back in here. Now, the difference is that if I come in here and modify this, and make that two, you can see that it not only changes that one, it also changes this one. Of course, that's not what I really want to do, but there we go. Okay, so I'll just transform that into position as well. And put that one over here. Okay. Interesting. Alright, there's two nice little screws. I'll just do that a, a two more times. And then I'll put those into place as well. Just like this. So that one can go up in there. There we go. Drop that down to be flush with that. Okay, and then this one. Alrighty, so there's our screws. I'm going to make this a little bit tidier here. So I'm going to come up here, make sure our project box is active, which it is. And I'm going to make another part. This one can be called screws. All right. And just make sure that's in there, which it is. Now I'll put these screws into the screws part. Just like that. Now if I highlight the screws part and hide it, it hides all of them. Or I can come up here and hide one of them individually if I like. So there it is. There's our little project box with four screws. In the, well this is the last video in this series, so um, what I want to do is uh, examine a few of the gotchas that uh, FreeCAD has. This is community based or a community developed software and nobody's being paid to develop it. Um, so as a result of course uh, there's no commercial incentive to make this thing perfect um, and even software that is um, for sale has, has similar sort of problems in, in its early development. But this is a great piece of software, um, it's free, and yeah, they say you get what you pay for, so, you know, we didn't pay anything for it, so we can't expect too much, but uh, it is a really nice piece of software for doing 3D modelling with, and it's free. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, video series, and I hope you got something out of it. And I will make a few more, I'm sure of it, and uh, hope to see you next time. Thank you very much for watching.